My name is Chris O'Leary and it's July 3rd, 2023, around 1 p.m. And I'm recording just for kind of posterity's sake and maybe for legal purposes, my recollections regarding the incident regarding the dead body I found here in Forest Park. So it rained on Sunday, June 18th, Father's Day. I don't think I went to the park on that day. I did go to the park on Monday, June 19th, Juneteenth. And either on the 19th or the 20th, 19th was Monday, June 20th was the Tuesday. I saw here on the ground evidence that someone was camping here. Uh, there was a basically a, a hoodie over here and then a gray bag, gray, not black, here. Like a gray Walmart bag. And I say gray, not black, because when I ended up finding the body, there was a, well, not when I found the body, after the police were done, instead of there being a hoodie there and a gray bag there, there was a black bag there. I don't know whether that's meaningful or not, but I just noticed it. You know, the, the three or, well, the three days or so that I saw it, it was a gray bag. And when I returned to the scene after the police were done, it was a black bag. I don't know whether that means anything or not. So then on, on or about June 22nd, Tuesday, I was walking through here. So this is like 75 feet off the hike bike trail, right by the General Siegel statue is like over here behind me. So I was walking through here. There's an opening over here with a kind of a stone across this channel that runs into, or that runs out of this marsh here. So I was walking along here and I observed, so as I was walking, I observed that someone was asleep down here, not where I found the body, but to the left of where I found the body. Where I found the body is like through where I'm pointing, you can actually see a pair of, you can see a pair of gloves there from where they were working on the person. I saw them asleep like there. And this is, uh, I think that was the 20, I think that was the 22nd actually. I don't know what I said. That was the 21st or the 22nd that I saw the person asleep here. And I do think that they were asleep. So because someone had moved into this part of the park, and this is part of my routine because this marsh over here is really interesting. The red-winged blackbirds like to play in here, but it's gotten less interesting because as these, as these reeds have grown up, the birds stay out of it and you can't really see anything. So I just took this out of my rotation. And so now when I walk, I'll, I'll go into that area over there with the stone over the creek and I'll walk kind of along there along that path. I would just kind of took this out of my rotation. That I think was the 22nd that I saw the person basically lying in this marsh. By that point, it had dried out, although it wasn't completely dry, so I thought that was a weird place for someone to take a nap. To my knowledge, that person was sleeping. So that was Thursday, the 22nd. By Saturday, the 24th, I started smelling something. Now, I've been to Haiti. Senior year, I did a service project in Haiti. Uh, spent seven, 17 days from 85 to 86 over the Haitian Revolution when Duvalier was thrown out. I know what a dead body smells like. I know what a burning dead body smells like. And I know what a body that's been there for a few days smells like. We worked in the homes for dying and that kind of stuff. And this is Haiti, so it's hot. 
And on Saturday, the, I guess it was the 24th, I started smelling something that sounded, or that smelled kind of disturbingly familiar. As I would walk kind of this route, you know, there's the General Siegel statue right there. I'm walking kind of along this marsh, which is mostly dry, uh, but that when it rains, it will, it will fill up some. So I smelled that on the 24th, which was Saturday. I smelled it again on the 25th, which was Sunday. I smelled it again on the 26th, which was Monday. And that smell was starting to get stronger. And, and just to understand, I walk this area, you know, the, there's a marsh behind the General Siegel statue. There's this marsh here. I just kind of, and then there's the, the fish hatchery and everything back here. So this is where I walk. I do this walk. I spend an hour, hour and a half doing this walk, uh, photographing birds and flowers and whatever, basically every day. So I did the walk on Saturday around noon, did the walk on Sunday around noon. I did the walk on Monday around noon. On Tuesday, uh, I guess it was the 27th, because 22nd was Thursday, so 23 was Friday, 24, 25, 26, right, 26 was Monday, 27 was Tuesday. So on Tuesday the 27th, I was doing my normal loop, and I, and I had taken, I, it had been about five days or so that basically I was on the other side of this marsh where I found the body. I'd taken that, like I said, I took that out of my rotation because this marsh, is, marsh has gotten kind of boring because the the reeds are so high. So the, so if there are any birds in there, I can't really see them. And I was walking right here. And I'm like, so it's Tuesday, the 27th of June. And this is like 2.30 in the afternoon. I'm like, if I smell that smell again, I'm going to tell somebody. So I was walking right by here, by this marsh, right by, here's the Forest Park Parkway right here. The entrance from, I guess, Union is right, the ramp from Union is right there. Union, and this is the Union and Lindell intersection right there. So I smell it. It's Tuesday the 27th, 2.30 p.m. I smell this really bad smell, rotting meat kind of smell and well and I should mention it's coming from the odor seems to be centered on the area where I saw that person sleeping over here on the other side of the marsh and it hit me probably first hit me on Sunday but then it really hit me on Monday oh god what if that person wasn't sleeping whether they were dead. So then I walked around here, coming around to this, I guess it's Union Drive and Grand Drive intersection inside Forest Park, the northeast corner, north, northeast corner of, the, of Forest Park. I'm like, I need to find someone and tell someone. So I went looking for a park ranger, a gardener, or a police officer. And I should mention on Tuesday, when I pulled up at probably about one o'clock, there was a police officer basically a hundred yards to the east of the Union Drive, Grand Drive intersection, sitting in the shade, parked in their uh, St. Louis City police SUV. I didn't identify the driver at the time, but I'm like, okay, if I can't find a, a ranger or a gardener, I'll go look for that. I'll go tell that cop. So I went and walking over here towards this intersection, towards the General Siegel statue. Didn't see anyone, so I got in my car and I started driving west and found that, or found a white City of St. Louis police SUV, which may have been the same car. Maybe it wasn't, doesn't really matter. S uh, parked at the intersection of Cricket Drive and I think it's Pagoda Drive. Basically the there's that straight drive that goes into the loop in front of the Muni. They were parked, you know, 75 feet short of, uh, 
75 feet short of Pagoda Drive on Cricket Drive. And I'm like, I gotta, I gotta tell this guy. So I pull up next to him in my silver Hyundai SUV, roll down my window, he rolls down his window. And one of the things that's a little weird and that I remember is that he was, I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what he was doing. I don't know exactly what he was doing, but I remember that he had to flip his steering wheel down. He had his steering wheel all the way up. And the first thing he did when he, after he rolled down his window was he flipped his steering wheel down. I don't know if he had a, a laptop in his lap or his phone in his lap or what, or what in his lap. So he flipped down the steering wheel and then he looked at me and I said, I think, I don't remember exactly what I said. My memory gets better as the conversation goes on. I said something to the effect of, I think there's a dead body. I think I found a dead body in Forest Park. I think there's a dead body in Forest Park. And he said, all right, I'll check it out. To which I said, or which I thought to myself, but I haven't told you where it is. And I, so then I said, I volunteered, it's, it's by the General Siegel statue, by the marsh by the General Siegel statue. To which he replied, okay, I'll check it out. And then I replied, and this is where it gets frustrating. I said, I will take you there. I will drive you right now, you know, put your car and drive and I'll drive you over to where I'm talking about. He's like, no, it's not necessary. I'll find it. To which I replied, and, and I'm 100% sure, you know, I'm like 80% sure of what my initial conversation was. I'm 95% sure of what I said after that. I'm 100% sure of what I said in terms of, you know, I will take you, I will drive you there. I'm 100% sure of that. I remember thinking how weird it was. How the hell is he going to find it if, he, if I don't tell him where it is? How can he be so sure that he's going to find it if I don't tell him where it is? And yes, I was concerned that he was blowing me off. So I said, I'll take you right over there. He said, I'll find it. To which I said, and again, I'm 100% sure on this. I said, follow your nose. I was hoping to, that getting him to the General Siegel statue would be enough. Although the fact is that it probably wasn't because the way the winds work, the General Siegel side of this marsh is not the smelliest part. The smelliest part is the hatchery side of the marsh, which is over there. Because I, I would, on the General Siegel side, once I knew what to, to smell for, I could smell it. But I was pretty damn sure what I was talking about when I was on the hatchery side of this marsh. When I was on the General Siegel side, I just thought it was swamp gas or something coming from the river because the river to pair is just right here or whatever. But so I didn't feel comfortable that he was going to keep his promise and look for this body. So then the next day, Wednesday, 28th, I, uh, I drove back and I'm like, I gotta go, I gotta go see. So I parked over on the other side of the General Siegel statue in the shade over there and then walked here, walked, there's the, the hike bike trail right there. And then I took a picture of the flowers and kind of shooting back on that bridge, the Kindle Betts River. Uh, and then I walked over here. So then I'm walking. So this is a little, I guess it's a glade is what you would call it. This is a little glade. Uh, you can see the the bridge is just right over there. And then here, just off the trail, there's this little tree here, this little redbud tree. And then there's this glade back in here. So this is how I entered the area was via this glade. So I walked in here and you can see over there, over here over my shoulder is a path. Well, that's a path that I've worn from kind of going back and forth and back and forth looking at this at this marsh although like i said i've taken i'd taken that out of circulation for five or six days because i saw the guy sleeping like here but like down in the marsh 
I'm like, all right, if he wants to move in there, that's fine. You know, if he wants to camp in there, that's fine, because, you know, this, this marsh isn't that interesting. I, I This is more about my 10,000 steps than anything. But then on, so on Tuesday, I smelled him like, I think that's a dead body. Then on Wednesday, I'm like, I got to go see if the, if the cop actually did something, and I, did, I didn't think he was going to do anything, because I didn't give him... He didn't, he didn't follow me and he, you know, the directions I gave him were too general. I think if he did anything, he looked at the marsh on the other side that's kind of behind of the General Siegel statue, which is kind of over here. And it was kind of my fault for not being more specific, but like I said, I offered to take him here exactly. I would have taken him right here. I would, you know, this is, I knew this is where the, I last sighted that homeless person or that person sleeping and I was like, you know, what if they're not sleeping? So I walked through this glade, up this path I had right here that I've kind of worn. And I'm looking down because the, the footing isn't great. And there's a hole right here that you have to look at. But then, so I, I look at this hole right here and then I pick my head up and right there, I think it's, I think it was right there to the left of this bigger tree there's that bigger tree there there's kind of a gap in between these two trees there was an there was a butt kind of illuminated in this you see the sunbeam right there there was a butt yeah it, there was a butt right there in that sunbeam and then shoes and it was a it was a caucasian but I did actually, I talked to a, a missing person task force guy on that day. And I, I asked him the question, are, are black guys butts white or black? And he's like, they're black or brown. And I'm like, yeah, the butt that I saw was white. And this is, again, this is just right, right over here to the, well, you've got those two kind of thicker trees right there. It was, it was in between those two trees right there. Uh, so I see this butt and it's kind of bloated and it's starting to turn purple. Clearly Caucasian though. So then I go over to the side over here to get a side view to try to get a view of the head. So I'm off to the side and the body is over here like through this, through that gap right there. And the head is on the ground right there. And I look at the head and I can't, I don't understand what I'm seeing with the head. I'm not seeing a human head. I can see like a shirt and everything, and I can see what looks like an upper body, but the head is, is weird. The head looks weird. It looks like dreadlocks, but it's not hair. I have to assume it's fungus or something like that. At which point I back the fuck out of there. I'm like, oh my God, this guy is dead. And one thing I observed was running from one of the trees over to where the head was is a, what I described as a strap. So I'm like, oh God, that looks like a suicide, if not a homicide. So then I backed out of here, went over here behind myself, behind here. And this is like, a, this is like one o'clock on Wednesday, June 28th that I discovered this. And then I, so I make the call at 1.03 p.m on Wednesday, June 28th, I make the call to 911. And, you know, fortunately those people, the fire department, they, they ended up routing me to the fire, fire department and the, the fire department people were prompt and professional and they ended up sending an, a hook and ladder and they arrived within 10 minutes or so. And so I met the three guys over there and just kind of showed them the area, showed them my path and said, all right, here's what I've found. And they're like, oh yeah. Especially when you, when you run around to look at the head, it was obvious that there was something really messed up with the head. So, so that's my testimony. This is Chris O'Leary. It's uh, Monday, July 3rd. It's probably one, it's probably one o'clock or so. Uh, Chris O'Leary here at Forest Park at the scene of the, where I found the dead body in Forest Park on, well, I found it on Tuesday the 27th and called it in on Wednesday the 28th.